Hi, I've just been looking back over all the videos I've made since March, which is four months ago now, and I've made 25 videos in that time, having been very resistant to making videos and still not finding it the easiest thing in the world to do. I think that's quite an achievement. And uh, anyway, this is going to be the last one of this series, which I think I could call the pandemic series, which sounds a bit geological in some way to me anyway. Um, what I'm doing is returning to one of the early topics, the soft toy. Here's my friend sitting there. Um, but instead of just directly doing a drawing um, from scratch, I'm going to use a previous drawing and turn it into a bit of a game which you can play by yourself and you can also join in with others to do. All right, I'm going to change cameras now. Okay, so here we are. Uh, these are the things you're going to need. A sketchbook or a piece of board perhaps to stick your finished piece of work to. Some print stick. A pair of scissors. Ruler. variety of drawing things, different colours, pencils, pen, felt pen, maybe paint if you like, and a drawing. Now this is a drawing of him that I did quite a long time ago when he was even, um, well there was a little bit less wear and tear on him than there is now. Poor thing. His, his little mouth started rotting. <laughs> oh dear, what a state he's in. But he is 50 something years old. Okay, uh, so the drawing I have photocopied and I've got another piece of paper as well. First job is going to be to square up the photocopy um, I'm going to do this by measurement this time by using number maths. Not my favourite sort of maths, but hey, here we go. Just finding a place to take the measurement from whether I've got an easy number to divide into. So if I go right from the edge of the piece of paper and take it as 18. Half of eighteen, nine, half of nine, four and a half. Okay. Do the same at the top. Join those together. Do the same in this direction. Oh, that's twenty two. Let's call it to the eleven. Five and a half, sixteen and a half. Yeah, I think right. I hope. Join them up. So you've probably done something like this before where you've squared up an image to transfer it onto another surface but it's going to be slightly different this time because what I've planned is to put it in line on my drawing paper, line it up with the top and the side and then 
and use the scissors to cut both pieces of paper into those sections. So I'm going to end up with a little pile of, well, two little piles of rectangles. Just get rid of the scrap first. Take that away. Got a guillotine or paper cutter you could do with that to make it a bit more neat. But it uh, doesn't matter terribly if it's not perfect. I'm going to cut all these rectangles. You could use a photograph if you preferred, of course. One of your drawings, you don't have to do, it would be quite good to do one of the drawings that you did earlier if, you, uh, if you've been doing all the videos and you did some of the cuddly toy drawings, that would be quite cool if you did the same as I'm doing. Take one of your drawings from about week two, I think, or three, where, um, we drew fluffy and soft objects and some really nice drawings of soft toys came into my email inbox, that was great. But really you're just looking for an image where there's plenty of interest, um, more or less all over. There are some of these which are turning out with nothing in them or very little in them that's okay just mean you have to to do less or nothing in those areas but I um, was looking through a few photographs I could have done this one or this quite a few nice ones I've got of trees and buildings and landscape entirely your choice Photograph or one of your drawings. drawing paper, photocopy, drawing paper. All right, so here is the drawing of the bear all in lots of little bits. And I'm going to deliberately shuffle it all up a bit because what I want to do is to, and there is a serious purpose to this as well as it being a bit of a game. Because very often when you're copying something, your brain, um, is busy naming things and saying, well, I know what a face looks like. This is how I draw a face. I know what a hand looks like. Or, you know, I draw what I think I know about something rather than what I actually see. So by doing this, you're turning each part of the image into a little abstract. And if I gave you that without telling you what the subject is, <clears throat> if you'd not seen it in the first place, you might think that was a bit of a feather or something like that. And that's what that would probably influence the way you drew it. So we're just looking at parts of the whole image as um, images in, in themselves. Each one is a little abstract, so it's why it helps very often to turn things upside down. Some of these pieces are turning out the right way up, some of them are upside down. I'm going to just take one at random, take a piece of my drawing paper, uh, pick up a, just a pencil. Um, like I say, you can use, in fact, it's quite interesting to use a different drawing mediums to do this exercise with. You don't have to, you could just go with pencil throughout, but you'll see with a finished thing it looks quite, um, quite
quite interesting done in different ways. Now what I'm what I'm doing first of all so that I can draw this shape in the right place on here. I mean I could just sort of judge it by eye. I think that's where it it falls something like that. But it's much easier if you let's start again. It's much easier if you start by putting an edge right near to an edge and then making a little mark on your drawing paper where the element, whatever it is, comes in. There's another one. Um, you can even sort of do like this hovering pencil thing where you hover your pencil, move the photocopy to one side and then I can mark in where the end of that shape comes. Then I can carry on and draw the rest in by eye. Because it matters a little bit less what goes on here than it matters at the edge. Because of course I want as far as possible for this part of the drawing to join up with the next part when I've drawn the next bit on the adjacent piece. So as long as I'm concentrated on the edges sufficiently um, everything's going to look all right. It'll all come back together and the, the drawing will be revealed. Let's see where those little faint lines come in. There they are. I often end up with these little scrappy bits of pencil. I find them quite nice to use. <laughs> Get a, a nice light grip just by holding it over the top like that to shade in with. Okay. You see what I'm, I'm doing? And of course, in the best Blue Peter tradition. Got one that I prepared last night. Right, the first one done. So when that's, that's drawing done, photocopy out of the way so I don't end up doing that twice by accident. Anyway, here we are. Here is last night's work. That's the photocopy, sorry. <laughs> That's the photocopy. Here's last night's work. And now, of course, it's a matter of redoing the jigsaw. I've done some pencil, done some ink, and some coloured pencil. But I think it would be really fun to do one of the sections in paint. All coming back together. Not quite sure how long it took me last night, but it's quite a nice absorbing little exercise to do. And of course it's good practice if you are going to take part in the collaborative project where I'm going to send a section of a piece of artwork to those that want to take part and a piece of paper cut the right size which you can either you can either use the piece of paper I send you or you can use your own paper you might want to do it on a different colored paper because I think the more variety we get the more exciting the, the final image is going to look there we are. I'm not looking for a perfect enlargement of an image or a perfect copy of an image um, in fact it's not an enlargement it's going to be the same size 
but I'm not looking to achieve a perfect copy of the image, but rather a version of the image that's clearly made by a number of different people. But it all comes together to make the same image in the end. Okay, and then um, the reason why you've got a, a sketchbook to attach it all to is so that it's not just a, a jigsaw forever. What you can do is go over, go away. Brit stick. Where's the Brit stick gone? There it is. Other glue sticks are available, of course. And then rebuild it on the sticky surface. Let's see, that's going to need to go halfway, isn't it? Do this bottom row just to make sure I've got enough room. There we go, it's not too bad. It's quite good, you can slide the pieces to make them marry up nicely. Need a little bit more glue under there. Blank piece. Tummy. Rest of his tummy and his arm. You can see with all the stripes, uh, I did quite a lot of work to ensure that all these stripes came on the piece of paper in the right place and they joined together with the next one quite well. There's a little bit of a skip just here and there, but um, it's matched well enough. And I, I wouldn't go back to that and fix it because I quite like that you can clearly see that those are different sections meant to look like that. Right, looking forward to seeing your sectional artworks and don't forget to let me know if you want me to send you a section of a mystery image. You might just be able to spot instantly what it is. I don't know, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to send you the whole image. I'm just going to send you part of something. But you will have seen it before if you've watched all the videos. Um, I'm not offering any prizes, but it'll be fun to see if anybody can work it out <laughs> what it is. Right. Um, let me know if you want to do yours, your section of the, the collaborative piece. Send me your name and address, of course, please. Email me your address if I've not already got it, because I'm going to be putting these in the post. And then uh, I'll just ask you to pay the postage to send that back to me, if that's all right, if you don't mind. OK. But in the meantime, do your own for practice. Okay, see you soon.